The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, we come here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what do we have today? Well, we're up about 100 points on the S&P cash, actually 98 at the moment. Uh, NASDAQ's up 314, Dow's up uh, 706. And we had a lot of people uh, continuing to think that uh, this is not some kind of uh, uh, more than a couple of day bounce in this market. I said yesterday and even through last week that the very light volume probably was going to see some kind of bounce. I think we could get maybe back up into the 4,100 area uh, by the end of the year. I'm not looking for a huge move. Uh, but uh, also, it's probably going to be uh, very choppy all the way to the end of the year. But I have a feeling that we're probably looking at the Fed uh, laying off just a little bit through the end of the year and see what happens. Uh, they'll probably come back uh, and tighten more after the first of the year but i think we have a little bit of a window here part of that uh being the elections and so they'll stay out of uh that for a little while uh could if it gets real bad could they come back in uh middle or late november they could but right now um i tend to tell everybody i trade uh like i am in fog and i can't see uh as far out as everybody else tends to say they can see, I try to uh, drive within my limitations. And that limitation right now, I think, is two, three months. I think we're looking, uh, what are we at here, the 1st of October. So you got October, November, and December. Uh, generally, if you can make it into the 1st of December, you're probably not going to have a lot. Sometimes after the week after Christmas, you get some movement. But my guess is we're just going to kind of stumble up and around, uh, kind of like uh, Otis and Mayberry, uh, who would just stumble around town till he got home to his jail cell. Uh, but uh, the drunkards walk probably higher for a little while. And it was just because we were so oversold. I can't understand a lot of people thinking that this is just a respite. But uh, we had we had exactly what we haven't had in probably, I'm going to say, 12, 15 years. And that is a bottom being beaten out. That's what they actually have termed it. Uh, we've lived in a world where we've if we had a U bottom or U top, it didn't last very long. Um, we've had kind of a U bottom here that took a week of trying to break through the lows. It really never could. You finally got a bunch of people through everything uh, at the kitchen and the kitchen sink at it on Friday's close to get it down below the low and instantly popped right back up. Uh, I tend to think uh, that uh, you can price and volume is kind of like uh, the movie Jaws. Uh, he had uh, two barrels on the shark, and it kept on bringing the barrels down. He put three barrels down on the shark. I mean, he may have put four. I haven't seen the movie the, in the last year. Anyway, he says there's no way they're going to hold that shark down with three barrels on it. And, of course, eventually he pops back up to the surface. And that's kind of what we're looking at. We had, uh, well, two barrels. Well, we had three barrels. No, not going to hold three barrels down. Uh, so it popped back up. And that's kind of what we have right now. We've got a market that's popped back up. There just wasn't any real juice to blow it through the lows. We needed about 18 billion shares. We were getting 11 and 12 billion shares. Yesterday, we did have a little bit more volume to the upside, uh, but uh, it wasn't huge. Today, it does look like it's going to be a lot more. And if everybody keeps shorting, we may be able to get up to 4,000 fairly quickly. Uh, we'll see today, but I've been waiting for some pullbacks to add to some positions that we've had uh, that started to go higher last week. I wasn't a, an incredible uh, perma bear as many were going into Friday. Uh, 
877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den. So what else do we have going on here today? Well, that's it. Um, I think a lot of people uh, ignored uh, the TLT bottoming. I think they ignored the dollar uh, topping. And uh, we're getting, you know, gold back into its, uh, uh, like Stella got his groove back. Uh, gold's finally uh, coming off the lows. Um, probably going to get some pullbacks in some of this stuff. It's not a one-way trip. And I don't think it's just we're going to go straight higher. But uh, in either gold or the indexes. But uh, probably the worst is over. As I said, probably through the end of the year. We might have something if everybody decides to book in the last week of the year. But uh, if we're going to probably have another big leg down, my guess is that after the, uh, after the end of this year. A um, lot of stuff happening, uh, but uh, that's kind of it. Uh, let's see what we have. Uh, had a uh, question early in the den. I wanted to get this out of the way, and the thought was from one of our uh, den guys, what's going on with uh, the whole uh, freedom of speech on social networking? How does that all work out? Uh, why the um, Supreme Court did already say that they were going to pick up five different cases. The one in the Fifth Circuit uh, looks to me like the one that's going to make it to the Supreme Court on freedom of speech on social networks. I know many people are talking about uh, Elon Musk getting Twitter. I think probably the best thing would be that the case uh, from the Fifth Circuit makes it to the Supreme Court. My guess is that they're going to affirm 98% of what that judge did, uh, mostly because it is one of the best rulings I've ever seen or heard of uh, for going through every possible argument on a uh, on a, uh, a ruling so they're really going to have to dig into this to find some reason to not follow that fifth uh, circuit call and a lot of people somebody in the den earlier in the day I don't know I may if I maybe I read it wrong uh, was saying that uh, that you don't have to or you can't push uh, First Amendment uh, protections on public businesses and that's why I'm saying you've got to read this thing because, yes, you can. It goes uh, – the precedents go back over 170 years. Some of the biggest cases were decided in, 19, in the 1980s on this. Uh, so the question is, um, is there a right to, to First Amendment right? Well, we know there is in a constitution. The question is, is there a, a right in the constitution somewhere – uh, to censor. And when you kind of turn the question on their head, I think you get a much better view of it. But I think once these guys start to work on uh, making their business work instead of trying to push an agenda, I think it's going to be better off for all of them. We'll be back in a minute. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. On this day in 1957, the first man-made satellite to orbit the Earth, Sputnik 1, is launched from Kazakhstan, marking what is now considered the beginning of the space age. Surprisingly, the world, uh, with its successful launch, Sputnik triggered the space race between the Soviet Union and the United States, ushering in an era of rapid advancement in the field of space exploration. After uh, three months in orbit, uh, Sputnik re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, burned up on January 4, 1958. And of course, uh, if uh, there's a little more to this story, one, uh, we were actually a couple of months ahead of them, uh, but uh, the uh, uh, President Eisenhower at the time was afraid that if he stuck uh, a satellite in orbit, uh, that then the Ruskies would start making a lot of hay uh, about us having satellites that go over the Soviet Union. But if they put one up and it went over us, then they'd have nothing to talk about. This went uh, unreported until uh, some of these documents were uh, unearthed in the uh, early, I think it was 2005 or 2007, we actually found out. In fact, uh, our first uh, uh, satellite uh, rode around in uh, the creators of its trunk uh, for about three months until he got the go-ahead from Eisenhower to launch it. And so now you know. Now you know the rest of the story. Yep, on this day in 1957. Okay, other things going on, uh, as we uh, said. Uh, strong day. I saw a lot of people uh, earlier in the day in the den talking about uh, maybe a pullback. I don't see it uh, right now. Uh, we have uh, really a day, day and a half more of uh, potential fund buying. Um, and uh, we'll see how that works out. Probably get a little bit of pullback after that. Uh, I don't know how big it will be, uh, but as long as we continue to have very decent volume here, it's going to be problematic uh, for the bears uh, to mount a big defense in the short term. As I said, I have a feeling they're going to short and short and short, and when they finally give up shorting, probably the end of the year, 
uh, the market will be ready for its next down lo uh, lo uh, download, down uh, leg, potentially. On Thursday, we have uh, Tim Ord back. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, look forward to talking to him. If you have any questions, make sure and get them to me uh, before, and let's say by noon on Thursday. Uh, we can ask more, but generally if you give Tim some time, he'll make some charts and uh, graphs and uh, stick figures. Uh, he likes to spend a lot of time. He's not uh, one from uh, actually grabbing uh, from the hip very much. Not a hip shooter. But we'll look at that. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Let's go ahead and start looking at some of the bigger movers and shakers in the market. Uh, with the usual suspects um, and see big gap up on Microsoft. It didn't look that good until later in the day yesterday. Um, the last 15 minutes started to see a lot of volume. Uh, today you have a nice gap higher. I uh, saw a high of uh, $250.36. Again, probably some back and forth and filling over the next uh, probably week as we look at some of these. Uh, my guess is that uh, many of the short seller bears uh, are not wanting to give up very easily in this market. Um, the one that they were pounding on to actually get the lows in the market and try to break the back of the market uh, was Apple over the last few days. Uh, again, Apple kind of acting just like what uh, Microsoft did, which was it didn't really have a lot of volume. Uh, Apple is right now, as far as I can tell, the weakest of the big four as we look at this. Uh, others out here, we'll take a quick look at uh, um, not surprised to see Netflix and some of these other uh, streamers not do well. Uh, the litany of big budget movie or series hitting uh, these streamers and them doing horribly uh, is uh, pretty epic, by the way. Uh, the uh, one that comes to mind right now is the, uh, uh, the uh, what was the name of that one? Not the, yeah, the Lord of the Rings kind of reboot. Uh, that uh, Amazon has spent a billion dollars on, uh, it looks like if they actually truly had to write it off on the books, they may be writing off uh, 550 or $600 million on it if uh, you uh, amortize how many people actually watch it uh, compared to the $17 a month fee. It's hard to break it down. But uh, just a great deal of uh, different uh, shows uh, that are really doing poorly as of late. I think uh, some of them are just really noticeable. Uh, She-Hulk, uh, apparently they spent all the money and went broke and didn't have any money left for CGI. Apparently most people that I've heard that have watched it, um, now they're watching it because it's literally so bad uh, because of uh, spending all the money on the CGI not having anything left to actually make it look good. Um, but uh, you got some light bounces in things like Disney today. It didn't do much yesterday. It's uh, up on light volume of about 6.6 .6 billion share, excuse me, 6.6 .6 million shares so far today. So, eh, what can you say? Uh, NVIDIA uh, having its big run. I thought it would start last week. Uh, it did go last Saturday. Uh, I mean, uh, it did start with a, a nice little hammer candle for Friday. Uh, yesterday, it was up a little bit. Uh, today, a nice gap. Uh, my guess is this is one of the most shorted stocks. We're probably going to see this one go a lot higher before the shorts give up. And that would be when I would think that I would sell if I was long uh, or think about reshorting, but I don't see any reason why that, uh, why to do that. Same thing with uh, advanced micro devices. Uh, not a lot of juice in this one. So technology is up. It's not looking that good, though, today. Uh, not strong. We'll see what happens by the end of the day. Micron uh, is one of these uh, self-serving things, like I'm going to give a billion dollars to charity, uh, but uh, it's going to be over 30 years uh, Micron talking about spending $100 billion 
saying that their first uh, facility will be up uh, around uh, IBM's old uh, semiconductor factory. I'm not exactly sure what um, what's uh, going on with that, but it looks like they're going to try to be in that area, probably because they think that there are a lot of people that used to work for IBM in that area that uh, could go to work for Micron building stuff, but uh, at least they're going to build one fab in upstate New York. Um, so you got that again. Um, you had a lot of volume. You had more volume yesterday. We'll see how the, the day comes in. Uh, technology doesn't seem to be uh, that big a deal today. So probably if you're going to see any pullback, it'll be in technology first. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, uh, looking at energy today, uh, let's just look at the XLE. You've got two nice gaps higher. Uh, you generally get two gaps. You're probably going to get three. So I think uh, we should watch uh, for tomorrow for the OPEC meeting. My guess is that uh, this pattern holds. You're going to get one more gap either tomorrow or into Thursday or Friday. I think we'll get probably before the end of the gap or end of the week one more gap higher uh, that is probably the short-term high in energy i think it's going to continue going on mm, you got to think that the opec uh plus one folks know that we're out of uh oil here in the united states we've run the uh strategic petroleum reserve uh lower uh and probably pretty much to the point where we're out of uh, any emergency fuel 
So is there anything really to change uh, their idea that they shouldn't at this point uh, just start uh, restricting production? And one of two things are going to happen. Well, I think the e easiest thing to happen is uh, watch for crude to really take a run over the next three to six months. Uh, or we could change the path of energy production in the United States. Uh, but that's kind of a no-fly uh, zone with the current administration. So I don't see anything other than the first scenario holding sway, and that is uh, we're going to see energy continue to go higher. Anybody that owns the ability to make it today, especially in the United States, basically got a monopoly since they're not going to let anything new, uh, no new wells, no new exploration, no new nothing. Uh, that's actually a fairly good business, uh, and uh, I don't know what else can change that. So, yeah, I'm pro uh, energy as far as owning any of these companies. I'm not so sure that you're going to see uh, the big profits in the refiners, uh, in the crack spread operators, but uh, certainly if you can get it out of the ground, uh, you're going to be the clampets. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Okay, see what else do we have here? To, to, to question about looking at the SMH real quick. I think um, a lot of the other folks, uh, you got your first big gap today. Um, just so many people short the SMH. Not going to be surprised if you get a couple of more gaps higher in this before it's out. Uh, you could uh, uh, you could continue moving to 215 before you actually even uh, get in and possibly change the downside trajectory. So that is kind of a big move. Uh, let's see if we go a little bit more here. Yeah, that's kind of a big move. Just that would be a 50% retrace at 215. Uh, the reason I like that mostly is there's a double gap there. Uh, those double gaps go back from the 9th of September and then the uh, 13th of September on the downside. Um, volume is good today. You did have a little bit of a turnaround on Monday, but uh, it looks to me like you're probably going to get in the neighborhood of six or seven million shares today in the SMHs, and uh, we'll see. But my guess is that a lot of people are going to start blinking uh, that have been short the SMHs for a while. So you may get your pop. Again, I think that's probably one of the weaker sectors in the market at the moment, uh, but that's it. Uh, got a question from Ron about uh, PLTR. Um, you know, this thing's been coming off the, the lows for seven days. Um, you really don't have a lot of volume. I think you want to probably, um, your email didn't say what you were doing with it. I would love to see a pullback to about 787. That's about a 50% pullback from today's high that doesn't have a lot of volume so far. And you've got kind of a doji out here. Uh, but anyway, somewhere around that uh, 787, $8 level uh, on light volume may be uh, a continuing move higher. Um, company has good products. The problem is that they can't talk about them because they're all top, double top secret. Uh, we talked about this from the beginning. Uh, it's very, uh, it, it's one of these stocks that if I was going to buy it, it would be buying it for the 401k for the long term, uh, not the short term where everybody concentrates on what the latest headline is uh, in the media. Um, one of the, we talked about uh, how I think, or at least I've said, how many uh, ignored the bottom in the TLT uh, and the top in the dollar. Uh, not many people talking about either one at the moment, uh, mostly just talking about the indexes. But I think you got a pretty good indication uh, when you tested the TLT on lighter volume on September 27th uh, that uh, at least the worst was over in the short term. Uh, you're not really going up out here, kind of light volume sideways action on the TLT. Uh, but as long as that does not go down, I think you have some uh, ease uh, – not – great, but some interesting prospects uh, to see the market go back higher. Of course, the big thing is the dollar coming off that high. 
so uh, I haven't looked at it last hour, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see, what do I have here? Okay. We're down to 110.57. So we're making a run again down here at the low of the day. And what was that? Uh, t -t -t low 110 and uh, two cents, just under two cents. So 110 and two cents. Uh, we'll see whether or not we can test that and whether that holds before the end of the day. As that dollar comes off, I think that is a good sign for the general market also. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Uh... EDZ. Uh, taking a quick look at the uh, emerging market uh, ETF, this thing is a big mover, mostly uh, moves on China markets. Uh, since China is closed this week, um, I'm going to say that one of the things you probably want to do is get a lot of sleep Saturday night when China reopens Sunday night, because you're probably going to have a fairly decent move. Uh, in uh, the indexes Sunday night as China reopens. So you want to keep uh, that in the, the kind of the back of your mind. But certainly a huge move in the EDZ, which is the bear market ETF, following our markets. Uh, my guess is you're going to have the same thing in China uh, come Sunday night. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to get here. Okay, Sam wants to look at uh, the uh, G, uh, not the GLD, the GDX, uh, the larger small cap gold moves. Uh, very nice move out here. Volume, uh, we'll have to wait until it comes in. But it looks like you've broken the previous high on the GDX. You've done it with volume. You had uh, 20.7 million shares on September 12th. Uh, you've got 24 million shares. It doesn't look at the moment like you would close above it, but that may change. Uh, but you have a little bit more for the first time in a while, maybe in the last year or so. You actually have some very decent energy that is more than the energy on the way down uh, in the gold miners. So maybe we finally got a floor we can trade off of in uh, gold. We shall return like patent. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we come back, uh, yeah, I, well, we'll look at this uh, GDXJ too. See if there's anything else here. Um, uh, GDXJ volume is a little bit in comparison to its previous low, a little lighter, but the day ain't over yet. We learned that from Curly and City Slickers. Um, but uh, you could probably break the 7.5 million shares from September 12th before the end of the day. You would like to see a close a little bit higher, but uh, I, I know, you know, as many times uh, in the last few years uh, as you've been disappointed in gold, the, the, it's a tough trade to hold through a previous high these days. A uh, question about... Uh, uh, Twitter and uh, what if anything's going on with that? I don't know. Uh, I'm wondering if they aren't just running the shorts. Uh, if this isn't a uh, easy way to do it, um, I haven't heard or seen anything other than rumors reported. Uh, but uh, eh, crazier things have happened. Uh, I don't tend to get into uh, headline-driven stocks as much. Um, Tesla just kind of going uh, halfway into the middle of yesterday's bar. Um, I think a lot of people are starting to figure out that electric cars are going to be uh, rather pervasive. And the what is a de facto monopoly for Tesla? probably going away more and more people are starting to see the trade-offs of having an ev uh compared to having a uh, gasoline powered car especially as i brought up uh, over the last week for uh towing vehicles like the big ford f-150 ev uh where you know if you're going to tow something more than 60 miles you're going to have a problem uh but uh, other things like that uh, it's just tough. You're, you know, you've had a monopoly for a while. Are you going to have or continue to have that? No, they aren't. There's going to be more competition. I've always thought the books were a little bit uh, cooked, if not thoroughly roasted at Tesla. Uh, is it enough to go to jail over? No, but my guess is that uh, we're going to find out a lot of stuff. As uh, Warren Buffett says, you only know who's swimming uh, without a bathing suit when the tide goes out. Um, I've always thought this was uh, a pre-split uh, $40 stock. So could you see 15 on it? 20? I think you could uh, over time. There, it's a massively uh, capital inte uh, intensive business. And I think the more you, uh, the longer you go, the more you're going to find out that uh, Tesla just sucks a lot of cash in to keep up with the Joneses. And by the Joneses, I mean Ford, Chevy, uh, Chrysler, uh, BMW. Everybody's getting into it. Um, he kind of capitalized, but my guess is it's going to 
uh, margins are going to slowly go down, and they're going to treat this company like they treat all the others. And that is that it makes uh, most times around six to eight percent on uh, gross margins. Right now, they say they make twenty. I think it's probably more like fifteen, but uh, eh, it'll take a while for the truth to will out. Okay, we looked at that. We looked at that. Uh, take a look at the XME on that. Um, again, you got two gaps here. I would assume you're going to get a third gap. Maybe it's in the next day or two. Uh, but my guess is if you were long this uh, and you bought it to the lows and you had that kind of uh, intestinal fortitude to hold, um, you got an 80% chance of one more gap higher. And that's where the easy money is going to be probably done on the XME. Uh, you are at kind of the top of a confluence range. Um, this isn't a brick wall. It's kind of more like a uh, eh, like a backyard fence uh, at the at this point. Uh, but uh, I would uh, not be surprised to see if uh, energy goes higher with the OPEC meeting and announcements tomorrow. That we see kind of the same similar thing. It seems to be tracking it very well, and part of that probably the dollar. But uh, we can see some other stuff. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, any questions for the DIN uh, before we finalize this? We'll look at some other ones. Okay. Uh, I've got a couple of questions. Ta -ta -ta. A uh, question about Ray Dalio. In case you missed it, um, I think it's uh, the news has been out there. He's been trying to quit for 12 years and just never really liked anybody that uh, tried to replace him. Um, I think there's been five or six people over the years uh, that he's tried to uh, hand off his $150 billion hedge fund to. That's a awful lot of power. You're controlling a lot of money. Uh, and uh, I think old Ray just said uh, I was going to wait until I made a bunch of money. He'd been very short the market. I think he was uh, covering over the last week or two. And once he kind of got uh, the, his positions down and manageable, I think he was ready to announce that was it. But, uh, you know, these guys have a nice run of 20, 30 years you can kind of have a little bit to crow about. I don't know if there's uh, a lot to say about uh, what that means for the market. I just think that he wanted to go out on top. And uh, eh, he had a bad year during uh, the first year of the pandemic. But uh, he made up for it from them, I think. But uh, eh, happy trails. Uh, STLD. Steel Dynamics, you got about a 50% uh, retracement. Um, you have a huge gap down back on the 14th. That came down with 3.2 million shares. Uh, you're coming up to that gap with about 900,000 shares so far. Uh, yes, 50% eh, retracement would be 7850. Uh, you've got just the bottom part of this gap. Oh, what was the uh, open for that day? 79.11. So my guess is that you want it if uh, you get one more bounce in the market, which I think we could, you probably want to be a seller right there at 79-ish. Um, back in that one, 78.50 is 50%. You're probably going to test or go at least in to this gap down a little bit. And at that point, Maybe you get some shorts that squeeze, but you want to be uh, have your finger on the trigger right back in that area. Uh, <laughs> STD, yeah. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. Wrap up the show.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we get back, i uh, got a question from the Dan to look at uh, India's ETF here, INDA. you got a nice gap higher. You don't have a lot of volume. Um, maybe that changes before the end of the day. Uh, I would say that most of these, if there's a big gap down, uh, your first target would be halfway for the, from that dip down. 42.35 is that first target uh, for India. If you get a second gap, then I would hang on for a third gap. As I said, about 80% of the time, you get two gaps, you're going to get a third one. So you got a nice gap today. The volumes really hadn't come in. Maybe it comes in later in the day. So you want to watch that about five minutes before the close. Uh, but, uh, you know, 42.35, probably not beyond the scope of reason, especially on some of these folks as they unwind. As I said, next week, you're probably going to get the other shoe to drop when China reopens out of its golden week. Uh, another question here is, is it true it takes 500,000 uh, tons of uh, ore to build a 1,000-pound EV battery? I don't know if that's exactly true. It certainly matters where you're mining it. If you're mining it in Chile, the answer is no. You could probably get something like... Uh, two or three or four to one in in that now if you're talking about in the united states 
it's a rare earth mineral. Um, it has a, a couple of places in the globe where it has an incredible concentration. Um, and of course, for all practical purposes, we'd be, if we uh, decide that we're going to stick with lithium ion batteries, uh, we are just really substituting OPEC uh, for Chile because they basically control it all. But uh, yeah, in certain parts of the world, they do mine it because it's cheap. But uh, yeah, you could move 500,000 tons to make a thousand pound EV battery in some places. Just not Chile. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. And Tom uh, takes it off to close up the day. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.